In the frozen silence of a 1980s laboratory, a single impossible signal flickered inside the noise. Most scientists ignored it. Three refused. Because that tiny spike meant the unthinkable. A human-made superconducting circuit was slipping through classical physics and acting like a quantum object. The world didn't yet understand what it meant. Not then. But 40 years later, the 2025 Nobel Prize revealed the truth. That faint whisper in the noise was the moment the quantum world crossed into ours. And this is the story of the trio who found a quantum truth hidden in the noise. Noise. Most of us think of it as the enemy of understanding, something to eliminate, suppress, or filter out. But in physics, noise isn't only chaos. It can be a signature, a clue, a faint imprint of processes unfolding beneath the surface. And for three scientists working in superconducting physics, noise would play a role in opening a path toward a new understanding of the quantum world. In California, physicist John Clark has spent years studying superconducting devices and the subtle fluctuations that reveal themselves only when temperatures approach absolute zero. On his screens, the signals appear faint, restless, almost lost in the background. But for Clark, these fluctuations are not an irritation. They are information, a measurable expression of the quantum behavior of superconducting circuits. Across the Atlantic, Michel Deveret is immersed in the theoretical and experimental landscape of quantum electronics. Superconducting circuits, Josephson junctions, and the strange rules that govern them form the heart of his work. He studies the way these systems can support quantum effects at scales far larger than atoms, how circuits themselves might act as quantum mechanical objects. Further west, John Martinez focuses on the practical and experimental side of the same frontier. In the laboratory, he builds superconducting circuits, devices that must be shaped with extreme precision and operated under conditions of extraordinary isolation. For him, quantum behavior is something that must not only be calculated, but constructed and measured directly. Three scientists, three approaches shaped by the faintest detectable signals that emerge from superconducting circuits. They work in different places, in different environments, across different stages of their careers. But all are drawn to the same question. Can quantum mechanics reveal itself in systems large enough to be built, engineered, and probed by human hands? Progress is never simple. Superconducting quantum devices are sensitive, influenced by temperature, by electromagnetic interference, by sources of noise so small they can come from distant electronics or even cosmic radiation. Many researchers see this field as challenging, difficult to control and full of obstacles. Funding is competitive. Experiments require careful design and long hours at cryogenic temperatures. The work can be slow, uncertain and often misunderstood. Though separated by oceans, their efforts share the same rhythm curiosity, persistence, and the drive to push deeper into a phenomenon that many believed would remain hidden behind microscopic scales. Independently, each of them works at the edge of what is measurable, and soon their paths will converge, leading toward a set of experiments that will change the direction of superconducting quantum research. As work continues across continents, a new idea begins to take shape, not in one place, but in three minds following the same trail. Superconducting circuits, once seen mainly as practical devices, start to look like something more. Systems capable of displaying quantum behavior on scales far larger than the atomic world. In Europe, theoretical models suggest that a Josephson junction, two superconductors separated by an ultra-thin barrier, can behave like a quantum particle trapped in a potential well. 
Its phase can oscillate, tunnel, and occupy discrete energy levels, just as electrons do in atoms. Across the ocean, experimentalists refine the tools needed to explore that possibility. They know that if a superconducting circuit can reveal quantized energy states, if the phase can be seen tunneling in and out of a confined region, then quantum mechanics will no longer be limited to microscopic particles. As the idea develops, so do differences in how to reach it. Some emphasize theoretical grounding, predicting energy level spacing, tunneling rates, and the shape of the potential well that defines the junction's behavior. Others focus on engineering, refining the fabrication of superconducting films, controlling impurities, and designing circuits that remain stable at millikelvin temperatures. Each approach is necessary, each brings a different perspective, but these differences also introduce tension. Should the experiment prioritize stability or sensitivity? Should the design push for strong confinement or for easier readout? How much noise is acceptable and how much must be eliminated entirely? Scientific progress often requires disagreement and here the debates are sharp, but beneath every conflict lies a shared belief. The goal is reachable and the experiment is worth the struggle. Eventually, their efforts converge into a single experimental attempt, a superconducting circuit designed to reveal quantum behavior through measurable tunneling events and quantized energies. The device is cooled, the instruments are calibrated, the environment is quiet enough for quantum behavior to emerge, if it is going to emerge at all. Signals appear, then distort. A fluctuation grows stronger than expected. A sudden disturbance, perhaps from thermal noise or microscopic imperfections, disrupts the coherence of the circuit. The measurement collapses. The device fails. It is a setback, not just technically, but emotionally. Years of preparation end in an abrupt and unambiguous breakdown. But failure in science is rarely final. It often reveals what must be strengthened, refined or reimagined. And this failure, dramatic as it is, becomes a turning point. A moment that forces the question, is the dream of a macroscopic quantum system too ambitious or simply not yet achieved? The first major attempt has collapsed. The superconducting circuit, designed to reveal quantum tunneling and quantized energy levels, has yielded only instability and noise. For a moment, it seems as if the limits of technology have spoken, as if the experiment is exposing a boundary that cannot be crossed. But setbacks in science rarely signal the end. More often, they expose the hidden variables, the imperfections in fabrication, the stray sources of noise, the environmental disturbances that creep into even the most carefully shielded systems. In the aftermath of the failure, each scientist returns to the data, examining the traces that survived the collapse, searching for any indication of what went wrong and what might still be possible. The work is quiet now, more measured, more analytical, not driven by anticipation, but by discipline. And slowly, a realization emerges the failure was not a refutation of the idea. It was a demonstration of how fragile a macroscopic quantum system truly is and how precisely it must be controlled to reveal itself. Amid the review of past measurements, something subtle appears. A fluctuation in a previous dataset, once dismissed as noise, now stands out under closer inspection. A transition in the signal that does not match the pattern expected from thermal effects or electrical interference. It is not definitive, it is not yet clear, but it is consistent with the very phenomenon they are trying to observe. A phase escaping from one potential well into another, the hallmark of quantum tunneling in a Josephson junction. The clue is small, but unmistakable. It suggests that the experiment was not fundamentally flawed, only incomplete that with greater control, better shielding, and improved fabrication, the quantum behavior might not only appear, but become measurable with clarity. This finding becomes a turning point. It provides direction, and with it, renewed momentum. With the new insight in hand, the scientists move forward with determination. This time, 
every element of the system is reconsidered. The circuits are redesigned with higher precision. Materials are refined to reduce microscopic defects. New shielding techniques are introduced to limit electromagnetic interference. Cryogenic stability is improved to keep the device at temperatures where quantum effects can survive long enough to be detected. Theoretical models are updated. Simulations predict more reliable signatures of quantized energy levels. Instrumentation is recalibrated to resolve fluctuations that were previously lost in the noise floor. Across their laboratories, the pace intensifies, not recklessly, but deliberately. Every improvement brings the dream closer, a macroscopic superconducting device demonstrating unmistakable quantum behavior. They understand now that success does not depend on a single breakthrough, but on the accumulation of refinements, each one reducing uncertainty, stabilizing the system, and opening the door for the quantum state to reveal itself. The experiment is ready to be built again, and this time, the conditions are better than ever before. In the quiet of the laboratory, the experiment begins. At first, the data looks familiar. Fluctuations, background noise, the restless movement of a quantum system searching for equilibrium. But then, slowly, a pattern emerges, subtle at first, then unmistakable. A transition that matches the signature of a phase tunneling through a potential barrier. A set of discrete energy levels forming where classical physics predicts none. A macroscopic circuit, large enough to see under a microscope, behaving according to the rules of quantum mechanics. It is the moment they have been working toward, not announced with celebration, but revealed in silence. A superconducting device demonstrating quantum behavior with clarity for the first time. In that quiet room, illuminated only by the glow of measurement screens, they witness the dawn of a new domain, quantum mechanics operating at a scale engineered by human hands. The results spread quickly through the scientific community. Graphs of quantized energy levels and tunneling rates circulate from lab to lab, conference to conference. Researchers around the world study the measurements, repeat the experiments, and confirm the conclusions. A boundary thought to separate the quantum world from the macroscopic world has shifted. Superconducting circuits, once considered ordinary electronic components, are now recognized as systems capable of supporting coherent quantum states. The implications reach far beyond the laboratory. These circuits become the building blocks for new devices, new technologies, and new experiments that will define the direction of quantum research for decades to come. But for the scientists who performed the original measurements, the moment is not defined by recognition. It is defined by the realization that a question once thought unreachable has now been answered. Quantum mechanics can be engineered, constructed, and measured in a system built by human hands. Years pass. The experiments become foundational references. And eventually, the work is recognized on the world stage. A discovery made in the cold silence of a laboratory, a measurement of energy levels and quantum tunneling in a Josephson circuit, is honored for revealing a new way to explore the quantum world. But the achievement is not defined by awards. It is defined by what it enabled, superconducting quantum devices that continue to shape the frontier of modern physics. And so the story ends where it began, with noise. Not as a barrier, not as interference, but as a guide. A faint signal revealing the hidden structure of the quantum world, waiting for those willing to listen.